Everybody, I'm joined in the studio today on site of Founder Worlds in San Francisco by astronaut Yvonne Cagle, uh, aerospace medical engineer, electrical, biotechnology, wearables. You have a lot going on right now in your life. What excites you? Uh, what excites me is the endless possibilities, that anything is possible, that when you take things off planet, then the sky is no longer the limit. And the best part is things that we discover off-planet in space oftentimes have real-world applications right back here on Earth. So we can even have the win in developing and innovating even before we step off-planet. really exciting. Can you give me an example of something that you're working on right now that, that has that practical application? Uh, well, we're looking at Mission to Mars within the NASA agency, and so we're studying behavioral performance, how we can make sure that we're able to um, have resiliency when it comes to behavioral performance on long duration crews. So we can keep crews working together, that we can keep crews um, sharp and, and stimulated in their thinking in an environment that can be very isolating and sensory de deprived. And that we can really make sure that we support the reintegration so that if by choice we want to get back in line and go to Neptune or even Pluto now, we're up to the task. That is really exciting stuff. So you're also a professor. You know, what type of things are you teaching your students uh, that kind of line up with your aerospace career? Uh, well, the most important thing in behavioral performance is really thinking out of the box and looking at what your tools are right here on Earth that might have relevance in space. And again, how you can use space to develop a platform to demonstrate capabilities that we need here on Earth. So for example, some of my students are occupational therapy students and they're using occupational science to use some of the same strategies and tools to rehabilitate um, um, challenging conditions for performance and learning here on Earth for crews as they go into long duration, as well as games and other ways to entertain um, when you're in that kind of challenged environment. It's really cool. So you just came off the main stage uh, giving the opening keynote you know, talk at the event. What was the message that you were trying to get across to the audience? message was really the next big leap is what our big thinking should be about and knowing that everyone can participate in that. Um, I myself am working with a very um, exciting team of engineers in Silicon Valley on wearable technologies, finding strategies to recondition astronauts and even people here on Earth who are deconditioned, infirmed, or just discouraged who want to either stay or amplify, kind of enhance or just get back in the game. And so the things that we discover are immediately relevant. And the big message that I wanted to make sure everyone came away with is be bold to dare to engage your ideas and to innovate. Because that iteration, that innovation is definitely here on Earth, available to make space for all. So. This is a, a bit of a different event. It's, you know, it's taking entrepreneurs and uh, tech people and people really of all walks of life. What attracted you to this event in particular? I think just the fact that there was so much that was new and cutting edge and that there was a community that's being galvanized around this conversation and how open everybody is to sharing their ideas so that you can be absolutely bodacious to think and to actually demonstrate that you can get, for example, in our case, the equivalent of two hours of exercise, both aerobic and anaerobic, and only in less than 20 minutes. That's mind-blowing. But you've got to be able to think out of the box, off-planet, and have the boldness to dare to go to the edge of that envelope and engage it. And I see entrepreneurs who have that kind of boldness and determination. And if that's something that we could pack into a solid rocket booster, we would be to Pluto and back by now. <laughs> That's it. So I believe uh, I read that you had in the past worked as a liaison between big companies like Google um, in a role of, of figuring out how you work with their data and commercialization. How, what, what did that role entail? Wow. Well, we um, very much were, I should say, rooted in the environment and the atmosphere. So um, much of our time was, was spent trying to demonstrate and evolve tools that could help us um, with clean tech, with um, climate change, being able to detect um, you know, uh, CO2 footprints, 
and very importantly was disaster preparedness, how we could use imaging to survey disaster areas and triage or prioritize our resources in order to do rescues. It's really interesting. So do you have a, a favorite Google technology? Well, I'm all about mobility, mobility of the human body, getting people back to moving, um, be it um, within their own physiology, um, or innovative exoskeletons for vehicles themselves. So for me, when I think mobility, I think anything from um, a, a driverless vehicle. So for me, that's that autonomous vehicle with Google is like absolutely amazing. And you can take that and you can put it into maybe even a space shuttle that wants to land on an asteroid someday. So it's a great demonstration capability. But the most important um, lesson, I think, is knowing that we all have our own spacecraft, that we don't really even need a vehicle. We are our own craft. And if we take it to space, well, that's Mach 25 all over the place and back. <laughs> that's awesome. Well, thank you very much for joining me today. Great. Thank you. Thanks.